Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Joan Padilla. I am the director here at Home of Hope Cancer Wellness Center located in Dixon, uh, in between Sterling and Dixon, uh, just off of Route 2. And today um, I am pleasured to announce that we have Dr. Young Song to be able to educate us um, on some very important um, information, especially for you men out there. Um, we want to make sure that you are aware and familiar with the, the necessary um, information to help you and your family uh, in the, uh, I guess, the topic of uh, testicular cancer. So, um, you know, here at Home of Hope, we don't, we don't, always provide supportive services, educational programs, wellness services. So this falls right in line, doctor, uh, with us being able to offer education. So thank you, Dr. Song, for joining me this afternoon. I very much appreciate your time and your willingness to be able to get the word out on such a very important topic. So can you just give us a little background of yourself? Uh, sure. I'm I'm the urologist here at CGH. I've been here for several years now. Um, and, uh, you know, the field of urology deals with men's health. <clears throat> so last month, as you said, was um, Testicular Cancer Awareness Month. And uh, now we're just giving a follow-up <laughs> from that month. <laughs> um, so you know, we practice here at the main clinic. Um, <clears throat> and yes, yeah, testicular cancer is a really special topic. Um, it's special because it actually is not very common, mm -hmm. but when you see a, a patient with testicular cancer, um, you just want to make sure they get the best treatment right away. Exactly. So um, can you just give us a, I guess, a layman's terms, um, what is testicular cancer? <clears throat> sure. So the male testicles, usually they have two. Sometimes some men can have only one from, for reasons of trauma or even testicular cancer but uh, there's a tumor in the actual testicle. So the, the testicle is made up of like a round oval structure. And then there's a epididymal head and the tail and the body that comes. And then there's like a vas deferens. So the, we're not talking about lumps or bumps on those structures. We're just talking about an actual tumor or a lump or a mass right inside the testicle. <clears throat> So it's generally on one side, mm -hmm. uh, but there is a very small percentage of men that can have it on both sides. But uh, generally, it's a tumor found on one of your testicles. Okay, thank you. Um, you had mentioned that it's it's a rare cancer. Um, do you have any information? What's the prevalence of testicular cancer in men? Generally, it's about maybe five to six men in one hundred thousand. Oh. So, um, the rate is actually pretty low, um, but every year there's about 9,000 cases. Okay. So, um, and about 400 of those men will die from mm. a, a testicular cancer. Mm -hmm. So that leaves almost 8,600 men that are cured. Mm -hmm. um, and generally testicular cancer, 90% of the men can be cured from it. Right. Great. You know, and I think that's um, really important to, to center on is that not all cancers are a death sentence. Um, uh, I think the way medicine has come, and you probably have more information on this, but, you know, we are seeing the, the survival rates, um, you know, because of really good uh, prevention, um, getting those uh, a test done, um, making sure you're doing exams and things like that to be able to um, help the survival rate of, of not just testicular cancer, but all cancers. So um, is there a certain age doctor that you see for testicular cancer? Yeah, so the concerning population involves uh, 15 year olds all the way up to 35 year olds. Okay. That's when um, testicular cancer is really at its height. Um, and then if you've got a gentleman who has like, who's has a testicular lump and he's over 50 or 60, um, that we don't consider, like, we don't really think of testicular cancer at that point. Maybe it could be like a testicular lymphoma. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it could be something different, but, um, generally it's the younger adolescent male and the young adult. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is testicular cancer, you know, some, I, 
cancers are very um, invasive. Some are very fast growing, some are very slow growing. Um, what's testicular cancer like? Well, generally when a male is diagnosed with it, it presents in a um, early stage. So I would say it really depends. Um, there are, you know, even within the category of testicular cancer, it can be broken down into what kind of tissue it is, what kind of histology it is. But generally, I wouldn't say it's um, as rapid as like when you think of pancreatic cancer, you know, you think of something really aggressive. But I wouldn't, I would say it's something that's very, sometimes very concerning mm -hmm. because we, I mean, just thinking about my population of or the patients that I've had, we did have a patient present with stage four testicular mm -hmm. cancer okay. and he had, uh, you know, extensive lung involvement, et cetera. But that is again, really rare. Um, mm -hmm. So generally I, I have like a young male, um, maybe they have a family, maybe they don't. Um, and they're, maybe they're single, that kind of younger mm -hmm. male and they find a lump in their testicle. And so future like fertility is always a discussion oh, um, sure. when we talk about that. So, so I think that, you know, when you have a male that's diagnosed, you have time to discuss and surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, like those are all treatment options and those are all um, able to be provided to the patient. Generally, we don't lose that window. Okay, great. So um, as far as treatment goes, you mentioned all three of the treatments that most people hear about, surgical treatment, radiation, and chemo depending on what type of a cancer within the testicles, is that the determinant for what treatment they will have? If it's as simple or I don't, not that, not that surgery is simple, but a surgical procedure as opposed to uh, the long chemo treatments or radiation. Yes, so all of the testicular tumors uh, generally should get surgery first mm -hmm. to remove it and then for the diagnosis. Um, and so they get, they undergo a radical orchiectomy, which is different than like a simple scrotal surgery for something else. Um, so they undergo a removal of the testicle through the inguinal canal. So it's, the incision is higher than you think. Mm -hmm. And then after the removal, then you have the diagnosis with what kind of <clears throat> histology. Um, and then you have the imaging um, for the staging. And then Luckily, uh, the testicular tumors can be very chemo sensitive and radiation sensitive as well. So that's why the high cure rate, but okay. I think right now they're leaning towards more um, after surgery kind of maybe to try to minimize the toxicity of chemo or radiation to just maybe observe after surgery, depending on the stage again. Sure. And it really, and it really goes, you know, the pathologist of course helps us determine what stage they're at. So mm -hmm. it goes from there. So it's definitely a team effort to, to determine what the best uh, plan is for that patient then. So mm -hmm. great. Um, would you say, you know, we hear uh, so many times that, well, it was my lifestyle. It was um, something I did uh, or could it have been something that I did or something, you know, I wasn't exercising enough or I had an, what, is there anything that research has found that why were men in that age group are getting testicular cancer? Um, you know, the only real risk factors are of course family history. Mm -hmm. um, and if they have a history of an undescended testicle at birth or um, in their young adolescent age, if they have an undescended testicle, it's also called crypt orchidism. And that can really put you at a higher risk of having testicular cancer in that testicle. And what that means is um, usually the testicles drop down into the scrotum, mm -hmm. but uh, for whatever purposes, because it's the muscles are too tight, they don't descend completely down into the scrotum and they're hidden somewhere along the canal or even in the abdomen. Um, and so then they atrophy, they become like a, a small like nubbin okay. and then, um, you lose that window of exam. So sure. you actually can't see if there's anything going on in the testicle. So those are the main risk factors for testicular cancer. <clears throat> Why is it during that age? That's a really great question. 
Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's nothing that the patient did. And it's, it's just, it's really out of their hands sure. why they can't. It's more common in Caucasians than like African-Americans. So there must be something more genetic, um, but that's kind of our limited understanding. Sure. So, so a young man, if they're active in sports and, and they get um, a, a hit in the area or something, that's not, wouldn't lead up to a testicular cancer diagnosis later on. No, I mean, they can have other issues, sure. <laughs> um, but uh, not, not, not cancer issues. Good. Uh, yeah, so when you have like a young man who's ath athletically, you know, active, sometimes they'll present with pain. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, pain, it can be, of course, from a benign source, like non-cancer related, or it can be from cancer. So, mm -hmm. you know, I do think that you should certainly get it evaluated because um, pain is <clears throat> sometimes a presentation. You can have like an epididymitis, um, like an early presentation for testicular cancer. Not that, I'm not saying that that's common, sure. but um, there's a small percentage of men that can present that way. Right, right. Well, leading up to, to that, um, what are the signs and symptoms, doctor, that um, would alert or should be kind of a red flag or for a young man to, to notice? Uh, well, it's kind of an, an analogous to um, breast cancer when you have a lump in your breast. Uh, when you have a lump that's very hard, like almost like a rock is in there. <clears throat> it's not soft, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not mobile. It's not like this little like water balloon or mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like that, but it's actually very hard. It's very fixed. It's very firm and it's on the testicle. Um, then, and it's usually like, maybe it could be like, it could present as small as one centimeter, which mm -hmm. is kind of like the size of my finger mm -hmm. um, in the testicle, or it can be larger. So, or you could even have lymph nodes that are enlarged. Um, so those are the, that's the real main sign. If you have testicular pain, that does not, I would not say, that, oh, the first thing is testicular cancer. No, I wouldn't okay. say that there's, you know, other things, but um, if you feel a firm mass or some kind of change, a, a big asymmetry, like between both testicles, mm -hmm. I would say you need to see the doctor. And I just want to say that because it's in the adolescent age, like 15, 18 year olds, 20 year olds, they're not necessarily like telling their parents, you right. know, about something that's changed. So I would encourage like young adolescent boys to be really open with their parents. You know, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing embarrassing about it. It's just like, you know, think of it like your elbow. Right. Think of it something, because if there's a big change, you really do mm -hmm. want to get that evaluated. Exactly. And, and being embarrassed shouldn't stop you from just saying, I had noticed something, you know, different about this. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It, you know, and that's just it. And this hopefully will, um, we're going to post this on our uh, website and Facebook page. And we're going to invite, of course, um, people in the community to, to view this. So for I don't know if young people will be viewing it, but for parents out there, <laughs> please take a moment to talk with your son to let them know that, you know, they need to be doing that. It, it's a good segue, doctor, because um, you mentioned um, if you notice any changes. And so as a woman and you as well, you know, we know and we learn early on that we need to do breast exams, self breast exams. And so we should probably, I'm assuming this, that you encourage people, young men to do a, an exam themselves. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I did this talk like maybe six years ago mm -hmm. and there were pamphlets about, you know, screening, you know, male, how to do a male, male exam, that kind of thing. Um, and I don't see that kind of, PR anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I was actually just on the US Preventative um, Task Services Task Force website, and it actually recommended not screening for testicular cancer, and it gave it a grade D recommendation. Oh. And so why they're saying that is because um, of the low prevalence of the disease. And so they thought that screening wasn't going to enhance um, more diagnosis. Okay. 
But I mean, you know, when you're showering, you're going to be cleaning yourself. That is a good time just to make sure everything is um, looking, you know, symmetrical there. Right. And so that's what I do. I do encourage like obviously you to be in tune with if, if you have any changes mm -hmm. and with adolescents, I mean, they're going through a lot of changes at that time. So it's just a good time to just check yourself. Um, so there's no formal like there's no um, formal screening, but six years ago there was. It, it was saying okay. you know men should actually like adolescent boys should do a testicular exam, mm -hmm. just like women do breast exams. But um, I didn't yeah. see that now, so it must have huh. something changed recently. <laughs> well, and you know we have we trust our science, and and if they feel that maybe they were getting a lot of uh, Un, you know, unduly, you know, false, you know, uh, negatives or, you know, that type of thing where you're getting um, people over concerned, um, you know, but I, I agree. I think that you should definitely learn and know what your body is telling you. So um, it's a little prevention, you know, a little making sure that um, you know how your body looks, how it feels is, is a good thing. So, um, so as far as that, um, we talked about the signs and symptoms of that and, and then the screening and things like that. So if a young man notices a lump or he's having some pain and a lump, that would probably warrant a phone call for uh, an exam through yourself at a urologist or even their general practitioner yeah i would i would say the general practitioner can certainly manage um a testicular tumor or mass mm -hmm. because the first screening test is a testicular ultrasound okay and so they would order it and then if the results were positive they certainly would be referred to see me sure and then we would discuss like either what we call cryopreservation um because we're talking about fertility Mm -hmm. um, if it really does end up becoming testicular cancer, you know, thinking about chemotherapy and radiation and, um, and having removal of one testicle, you can preserve your sperm uh, okay. before you undergo these procedures. And then you would have, you know, unaffected sperm if mm. you needed it in the future, sure. but, um, but you don't always need it, but you, you know, it's nice to have that option. And then we would undergo surgery. Mm -hmm. There are some lab tests also that could be ordered, just blood tests if they're positive, okay. if they're positive okay. testicular tumor markers. Okay, so so a blood test, the testicular uh, tumor has a specific uh, cell or that you're looking for, and that shows up in the blood then through that blood. Yes. Work? Okay. Yeah. So not all tumors will shed this, mm -hmm. um, but like a certain percentage of tumors will have that. And so we always check for that. Too. Yeah. Great. Great. So, well, I very much appreciate your time. Is there anything doctor that I didn't touch upon that you feel is necessary? Are there resources out there that uh, our young men can, can reach out to um, if they had some questions or concerns? Yeah, well, um, the American Urological Association, you know, is our guiding for basically educational organization for guidelines and such. So yeah, they can always Google that organization. Um, mm -hmm. And then I wanted to also say that I had a patient that went that had testicular tumor or testicular cancer. He underwent the treatment. He went to Home of Hope. And he had just had the best things to say about Home of Hope. And I, that's when I, this was like early when I, this is years ago. And so I was really impressed with Home of Hope and oh. he had such nice things to say. Wonderful. So, um, you know, again, it's not very common. So it's not like I could refer him to another person right here right. that has had this cancer. Um, so I think I really appreciate the work that you guys do there, um, helping patients get through this kind of a tough time. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you, but, doctor. That, that's nice to, to hear. Um, we, we help everyone um, that's been touched by cancer and any cancer. So um, we see all kinds, unfortunately, but uh, I'm, I, that's nice to hear. Thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. I know. I liked what you said in the beginning too. You said not all cancers are the same, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I, and I know we, we deal with like prostate cancer and bladder cancer and, um, <clears throat> I really agree with that. You know, when somebody hears the word that they have cancer diagnosis, they almost like 
it's just hard to register that they have cancer. But right. it's really, you have to kind of get into the details, into the, into like the weeds of that cancer, because not all patients are going to die within, you know, mm -hmm. like two years. Like someone like with stage four cancer is not someone like stage one. Right. And so it would be great if patients um, had that kind of understanding because mm -hmm. then I think their anxiety level and their um, just like well mental wellness mm -hmm. would be at a better state. Um, right. So <clears throat> so whatever the diagnosis is, you know, it, they feel more more confident in mm -hmm. you know, the prognosis because not all cancer is the same and you really right. need to know. And even if, you know, a person that has testicular cancer, like I said, one gentleman presented with stage four with big tumors in their lungs, the other, you know, another patient with testicular cancer, the same thing presented with just like a little one centimeter lump in their testicle. Mm -hmm. And so surgery was all he needed. So you really want to, um, you know, before somebody, before a patient really starts to dive into this like anxiety hole I feel like they should really realize you know what maybe I don't have you know the, right. the big cancer diagnosis that yeah. you think that but I think you know that's just kind of generally from like the media or the culture or something sure. understanding but. well and we get calls a lot of times doctor um the initial cancer diagnosis you know they hear it and um there's lots of questions and there's lots of anxiety and they're on this roller coaster. And we always, always uh, try to help calm them down and say, now let the doctor and do what they need to do because they need to find out, like you shared with the pathologist, what type of cancer this is, what the cells. And, and I said, you know, a lot of times we offer that they're putting together the best treatment plan and it can be an individualized, you know, type of a scenario. So I, we tell them to stay off Google, <laughs> do not do a bunch of self-research because that in it, in and of itself can create a lot of anxiety. So, yeah, you know, I love Google, but you're right. It's hard to filter. You don't have a context, you know, right. what you're reading and you have no idea if it applies to you. So that's where I think, yeah, you can start to get, and, and you know, of course, the Google, like they're always going to say, like, check with your doctor, like, yeah. if, you know, such and right. such. So, yeah. so, yeah, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Always go to your doctor first before you jump into any type of uh, extraordinary uh, measures there and, and what you think is going to be happening and things like that. So, Wait, I, I have one little show and tell item. Hold on one okay, second. Okay, great. <laughs> All right, let's see what I got in here. <laughs> so this is, oh, there <laughs> you go. Is that yeah, so this is this is what I was talking about. This is actually the testicle part. Yeah. And this is the epididymis. You get oh. you get this like like mohawk up here, mm -hmm. and then this is actually the vas or the spermatic cord. Like okay. the vas is in the spermatic cord. Yeah. But um, yes, the lump would be right like in the testicle portion okay. of it. Okay. okay. Very nice. Wow. Well, hey, a little show and tell there. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, good. I think that's about that's about it. But of course, you can call us if you have any questions. Yes. How's that? Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I like I shared. I very much appreciate your time, and um, maybe we can uh, do this again a uh, little bit more. Um, uh, getting people maybe in person, you know, to, to have the class. And so, but uh, you have a wonderful weekend, doctor. Thank you so much for your help. And you. um, here we go. So thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.